and welcome to another Cliffs List webinar. And today, my special guest is Sunny Arvado of Strength with Sunny, uh, Strength by Sunny. Sorry, and um, I think you're going to find him an extremely interesting uh, personality. Uh, Sunny, why don't you tell people who probably aren't familiar with you a little bit about yourself and uh, uh, and I guess your your history. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, uh, Cliff, thank you very much for having me on here. As you said, my name is Sonny Arvado. Um, I'm the creator and founder of Strength by Sonny, which is my, um, I guess you can call it a men's self-improvement website, but it's, you know, once you take a look, it's definitely a lot different than anything else you'll ever see um, on the internet. Um, you know, I'm someone, when I first started off the site, you know, I'm someone who, I was very fortunate, very blessed in that, you know, a lot of authorities that, that are on the internet that talk about, you know, self-improvement and, and getting good with chicks and everything, you know, they kind of started, they started from a point of, of, I guess you call it failure, a point where they had to start learning from the ground up. You know, I didn't really have to go through that learning curve because, you know, I was very fortunate, you know, came from a you know great family. Um, I had strong um, masculine role models my entire life, starting with my father, um, you know, my uncle, um, their friends. Um, I had cool friends growing up. Um, so just very, very blessed, very fortunate. Um, because as I've written about on the site, I think our, our childhoods, our upbringing, um, they play a massive role in the men that um, we eventually become. Um, a lot of guys, you know, they don't really necessarily have a good upbringing and that kind of messes with them. Um, but I was very fortunate I didn't have to, to go through all that. So as a result, um, it's made me someone who, um, you know, I think, um, you know, is a, a strong, confident individual um, and, and generally has a very uh, positive outlook towards life. Yeah, I think that one of the things that comes across the most from, uh, uh, I guess, uh, what I've read about you and seen and is the confidence that uh, I think a lot of guys are are um, are lacking or or in, in varying degrees. And I, I guess I guess that's a good place to start. I mean, uh, I don't know how you having not had that de uh, deficiency <coughs> might uh, advise guys to uh, correct what they've got, but you know, what, what do you, what would you tell, what do you tell guys that uh, need to improve their confidence? Yeah. And again, just going back to, you know, my upbringing, again, this is something that kind of came naturally because, you know, even growing up, you know, I was a multi-sport athlete, high school, I was a three-sport athlete. Um, so I always had a sense of competition and confidence from, you know, just competing and, and, you know, various, uh, victories I've, I've had over the years um and also learning experiences from defeats as well but you know getting past that again that's the past a lot of guys they don't necessarily have that background i would say the biggest thing guys can do to improve their confidence however is um accomplishment accomplishing something and that it kind of starts with mindset when you start looking at life through the you know when we think of accomplishment we tend to think um, we have a very restrictive outlook where we think we have we think it has to be something gigantic, like just made a million dollars, um, you know, it just uh, just started a business. We think it has to be something gigantic. It doesn't have to be. You know, this having this accomplishment mindset, um, I would encourage guys to look at everything as a, a little, a small, a little victory all these little accomplishments, you know, take note of those things. You know, you don't necessarily have to be so hard on yourself. Just something as simple as, you know, you know, I woke up early today or I went to the gym today. Um, you know, I didn't have any negative thoughts today. Just constantly reminding yourself of all these little micro accomplishments. You know, over time, that's going to make yourself more, um, a more confident uh, person. Um, and then there's other things such as just improving your overall your overall value in life, you know, um, there's a lot of debate over what a man's value is measured by. Um, I would argue that um, in my experience and the experience of people that I've helped over the years, one of the biggest boost, uh, confidence boosters is doing everything you can to improve your physical attractiveness, which is why since day one, I have emphasized the importance of going to the gym and and going down the bodybuilding route not not necessarily competitive bodybuilding but just you know sculpting your body i think that's a that plays a massive role in improving your confidence 
And what about, uh, I guess, uh, having that confidence with women? Because I think there's subtle differences there. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and I wrote about this. I've written extensively about this over the years. Um, you know, dating, getting good with chicks. Um, it's something, uh, one of the many topics I cover on my site. Um, I think... I think you have to know the rules of the game. Um, and it is changing. You know, I started Strength by Sunny in 2014. Some of the advice, I'll be the first one to tell you right now, 2017 right now, um, the dating game, it, believe it or not, it has changed dramatically. Social media is a big part of that. Um, so it's constantly changing. Um, but how that translates to confidence with women, when you know that, well, you have to know, you know, what do women want? Or better yet, a better question is what do women value? I wrote an article on this. I'm explaining it. What are the markers of value in the eyes of women? Um, what are those things? Uh, physical attractiveness, um, overall frame, physical frame, uh, uh, financial status, um, social status, you know, how uh, your overall respectability level, um, both men and women, you know, how do they treat you in a normal social setting? Um, these are things women, um, they're very attuned at picking up. Women are incredible screeners of men. They can, they can look at a guy, look at how he interacts with other women, look how other women look at him, um, how other men treat him, and they can tell you right away if that guy's valuable or not. That's just, that's women's instinct, modern-day women's instinct. Um, so when you know that you bring the goods. I look at it as dating is a business. When you bring these markers of value to the table, you can, there's no other way but to feel confident when, you know, and even if you don't necessarily bring them to the table, because let's be honest, a lot of guys that get into the dating realm, um, they don't, they don't bring that stuff to the table, which is why they get into this, um, you know, they stumble upon this side of the internet in the first place. However, again, this, refer, this goes back to my, um, looking at everything through the lens of little accomplishments. If you're not necessarily valuable yet, but, you know, throughout your daily routine, you're constantly working on these things. You know in your heart that you're constantly, you know, you're, you're working out, you're getting in better shape, um, you're taking better care of yourself, um, you're dressing better, you're hanging out with better people, uh, you're improving your mindset. Just this idea of all these little micro improvements coming along, you know, that as well, that's also going to improve um, – a man's confidence with women as well. Okay, and um, I guess uh, have you have you uh, had some interesting successes with guys who came to you who were who were shy or who uh, just always said the wrong things? And like, have you, have you got some, I guess, suggestions on how people can improve that or guys <clears throat> can improve that? Yeah, um, you know. One of the first things that kind of put me on the map as an online authority was um, it was this two part article. It was called how to, uh, how to get girls, the 10 laws to to getting girls or something. It was broken up into two parts. It was a part one and part two. Both parts had, had five main points. In part one, the number one point was master people before you master um, women. Um, what I find and it's a trap that a lot of guys that kind of get into the PUA stuff, they fall victim to is what they will do. Um, they have relatively low uh, value in the dating game. Um, and they don't have good social skills. A lot of these guys, they come from like a tech background. Um, they were kind of introverts growing up. And what they'll try to do is they'll immediately try to go into, okay, I don't have, I have very poor social skills now. Okay, well now I'm going to try and just shoot just to getting good with women, you know, knowing how to say the right thing and do all this shit. No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. You need to master general people skills first. And along the way, what comes along with that is mastering your skills with women as well. Okay. And, um, um, oh, was... and as far as an, as an example, um, I mean, over the years, you know, I've had people literally from, they have started from scratch, like, Ground zero, they got nothing going for themselves, poor social skills, no confidence, um, uh, you know, zero, like, zero female interaction whatsoever, like, never even, like, 
like kissed a girl. Um, and what did I do with them? You know, I didn't go, and this is what, you know, we'll talk about this later. This is the difference between my, um, I guess you can call it, uh, live training or boot camp training as compared to a general PUA. Um, you know, people like that, you know, it's not going to work taking them out for three days and nights and just having to do day game night, just cold approach, cold approach, day game, night game, day game, night game. No, no, no. You have to improve these other things. You have to get them confident by going to the gym and doing it and, and uh, working on general social skills. So I've had people like literally starting from scratch. What did I do? We improved everything. You know, we got them on the right program, got them going to the gym, got them uh, going out, not even necessarily to get chicks, but just to go out and start establishing a social circle, um, getting them on the right career path. Uh, and, uh, you know, whatever dating goal they wanted to accomplish, getting them there, whether that be um, just just freaking just check getting notches on the belt or, you know, getting, you know, a solid girlfriend that they want. Um, you know, every client that I've ever worked with, I'll be the first to say it, whatever they have wanted, I've worked with them and it hasn't been easy, but they have gotten ultimately what they wanted. Um, and then some. Okay. And, um, I guess I, uh, do you ever, do you ever uh, have uh, women as clients as well? Um, not, no, not for dating. I've had women clients, um, specifically when it comes to like fitness prepping for, you know, bikini competitions and things like that, but not, not from a dating standpoint. No. Okay. Um, how would you summarize, I guess, your philosophy as far as uh, dealing with women? Um, I mean, my philosophy is, you know, dating is a business. You have to know um, what matters at that table um, and you have to bring a lot to the table. A lot of things, you know, those things, these markers of value that chicks are automatically looking for, you got to bring that to the table. Okay, you bring that to the table, um, you know, that's going to make you more confident. Ultimately, you know, where we're going as a society right now, and I talk about this on my blog, um, we're at a point now where um, all the dating power has pretty much been placed in the hands of women. Um, a lot of guys are discouraged by this. You know, it can be discouraging. It can be frustrating to a lot of guys, um, whether it frustrates guys or not, doesn't matter because it is – that's – you know, that's how it is now. Um, so what are you going to do about it? So uh, my philosophy is no matter what, never put yourself in a position where um, where you're not in the driver's seat. Um, you know, throughout an entire uh, relationship from initial meeting to, you know, long-term dating or even beyond that, there's always, in my experience of what I've observed, there's always someone who is in the driver's seat. You know, it's kind of a zero-sum game. There's always someone who's in a little bit more control. You know, who is it most of the time? In a lot of relationships you'll see, and you can just, you can see this just by walking around in public, a lot of times what you'll see, and it's becoming more common, is usually the chick um, who's dictating the relationship. She is leading the guy around, and, you know, it's her word against the guy's word. Um, I'm the opposite of that opposite of that um more of an old school like listen okay you know i'm the man she's the woman you know in no world no situation is she gonna be you know have a sovereignty or power over me i'm always in the driver's seat um and you know that's just how it is is there some advice that you hear about out there from uh whether it's puas or others uh in terms of dealing with women that uh you don't agree with and, and how you would handle things otherwise? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I've written extensively about uh, the PUA industry and uh, some of the shady things and incorrect advice that is um, uh, kind of floated out there. Um, I would say the biggest thing that I've always had had an issue with is the very idea of cold approach. Um, Cold approach pickup to me, actually physically going up and approaching a chick and hitting on her, I think it does have value um, for guys, but I look at it as it's kind of like the relationship when it comes to fitness, the relationship between food and supplements. When it comes to building muscle, okay, you work out in the gym, 
the most important thing you can do to recover and ultimately grow your physique. It's not supplements. It's food. Nothing will ever replace um, nothing will ever replace food. Same thing when it comes to the dating game, okay? Since modern civilization, I, I don't know, I can't really peg it down to a year, but the way most guys, most guys who are actually happy with their lives and, and have the sex life that they want, the way most of those guys get it, it's never from cold approach. Height. It's never from cold approach. Um, you know, a lot of guys, the reason why they get into the cold approach is because they see, you know, the popular kids in high school and college, and they see like, okay, yeah, these guys are, you know, you know, they're getting all the chicks, and, um, you know, they have the dating life they want, and they're happy. You know, I want that. A lot of guys. Deep down, they think that I want that. Well, those zero percent of those guys, you know, your popular kid in high school or college, get a lot of bitches from going up and approaching them. No, they don't. They get it from social circle. That's the most important thing. Your social circle is the most important thing to getting laid, um, especially if you're outside of high school and college. You know, in the world beyond that. Your dating life, it should stem from your social circle. And, you know, cold approach, the way I like to think of it, it should be kind of like just another tool in the pocket. You know, you have the ability. If a girl's not in your social circle and you see her, cold approach, it should just give you that, you know, that initiative. Like, okay, I see a hot girl over there. Okay, I'm going to go talk to her. Where a lot of guys, you know, even guys that are popular um, and do have, you know, get an abundance of chicks from their social circle. They don't necessarily have the balls to go ahead and do that because um, they don't have exposure to this world. Um, so in an ideal world, um, when I, when like, you know, guys that are like 22 fresh out of college, they just moved to a new city and they ask me how to, you know, how to set up a dating life where they're just getting laid all the time and they can do whatever they want. Um, my advice to them is to focus primarily on social circle in the beginning and use cold approach as, you know, again, like I said, just another tool, a supplement. It's a supplement to your overall social existence. And um, I guess uh, any particular tips on how to build your social circle uh, <coughs> for guys who have uh, difficulty with that in general? Yeah. Um, you know, in today's day and age, you know, you got the Internet. You can do a ton of research um, the way. I think most guys would benefit from doing it is literally go on to Google and look up, you know, research the places where all the, you know, the young single professionals go to. Um, a good place to start is whatever city you're in. Let's say, uh, I don't know, you're in Milwaukee. Uh, look up Sunday fun day in your city. All right. Milwaukee Sunday fun day venues, Dallas Sunday fun day venues. Austin, Texas, Sunday fun day venues, you know, Sunday fun day in most cities. Um, most people, they're not going buck wild partying. You know, they're kind of, you know, they're having a couple drinks on a Sunday afternoon. A lot of people just go there to mingle, to be seen. That's a good place to start. Um, another place I would actually say the, the, where most people get their social circles from is from their work. Um, because, you know, you're with your coworkers all day. What happens? Um, you know, you have networking events, you have happy hours. Um, so most people, they get their social circle from work and then they expand outwards. Um, so I would actually advise start with work first. You know, if you have any cool people or hot chicks from work, see if you can snag them from there. And then from there, look up, okay, Sunday fun day venues or even just venues, you know, where it doesn't even have to be a bar or a nightclub. It could just be like a, a particular part of the city, you know, where to where do young single people uh, hang out in New York City? What about um, the actual meeting of these women? Uh, you know, you're meeting them through social circle. Yeah. Uh, you you know, there's also the, I guess, probably you, you do cold approach when the opportunity is there, for example, rather than focus on it. It's just when you see someone that you really want to meet, that's when you, you move into action, basically. Um, so... How would you specifically, uh, you know, take a girl from, she, you just see her, you're, you're meeting her in your social circle to, to uh, you know, becoming more uh, closer to her? Uh, you know, how do you, what do you, do you have any particular way of doing that? Or is it uh, just 
just straight out ask her, you know, ask her out or how, how do you do it? Well, the way I would do it and the way I've done it in the past is, you know, all right, you're talking to a chick, you have a general vibe. Um, you should have a general understanding of whether or not the chick thinks you're attractive um, or at least interested. And I think a big, um, a big indicator to me is if you're talking to a chick, um, you know, how do you talk to a chick? Usually the same, you, you tend to have the same conversations. Where you, what's your name? Where are you from? Uh, what do you do? These are the first questions. These are kind of like interview mode questions. I know people say to stay away from those, but you know, in reality, those are the questions that come up. Um, when you ask those questions to a chick or even any questions, a big indicator is if she reciprocates, meaning she asks you those questions. You know, where are you from? Oh, I'm from, uh, yeah, I'm from Washington, D.C. What about you? Where are you from? Oh, I'm from New York City. And, you know, you, you, you tend to you gauge her overall interest. Um, you know, and you go from there. You know, if you if you talk with her for a while, she seems genuinely interested. You know, you could turn it up a little. You know, just whisper in her ear, "Hey, listen. You know, I don't want to be creepy, but um, I think you're really sexy. I'd like to take you out sometime." And then, boom, it's out there. You know, you show your intent, um, and it's either a yes or a no. She'll either say, and you know, most guys, you know, they think they're going to be let down hard. Not necessarily. You know, if the chicks. You know, if she's interested in the conversation, she might say something like, hey, you know what? I think you're really cute. Um, but here's the thing. I got a boyfriend. I really can't do it. She's like, all right, cool, whatever. Um, and you just go from there. Or it goes the other way. Oh, yeah, I'd love to go out. Cool, grab my number. Yeah, cool. I'll grab your number. When are you free this week? What's your schedule like? That's another important question. You have to, you have to, what you're doing when you initially meet a chick, whether it's through social circle or cold approach pickup, you should be thinking about you know obviously not making obvious but you should be thinking about okay if it's not going to go down right then and there meaning you're not going to bang her take her home and bang her right there on the spot you're going to grab her number you have to think okay what do i need to do to make that happen if it's not going to happen tonight what do i need to do to make that happen so the first thing you need to do you need to find out what that chick's schedule is all right what's her schedule like what is her deal is, does she work does she go to school What's your schedule? Like, you know, this is basic information you need to uh, accumulate so that when it comes time to text and the meet up, you know, there isn't a mystery. You know, for instance, I'll give you an example. If, if I met a chick who is a, um, let's say she's a college student who goes to school in the, you know, she has classes in the morning and then at night she works as a bartender um, Monday through Tuesday, and she's off. Uh, she's off Thursday night, and Wednesday she just has classes. Okay, let's say I got that information from her. It wouldn't make sense for me to try and get a. If I meet her on a Sunday, I might text her on Sunday and be like, "Hey, yeah, it's cool to meet you." But it probably wouldn't make sense for me to try and text her relentlessly on Monday or Tuesday, trying to set a meetup for that night because I know. Because I paid attention to the conversation that, you know, this bitch, she's got a, she's got a full plate. Monday, Tuesday, she's dead. She's got class and then she'll probably go to the gym and she's going to work, you know, her, her day is shot. She's not going to want to hang out for the first time. So you have to gear it towards when she's totally free. And that's the thing. You know, if you have general chemistry with a chick and she's free, she's going to make the time to want to hang out. I don't care what guys say. But that's what it is. It's just, you know, initially, so to go back to what you were asking, how to take it from just social circle to something more, um, you vibe with the chick, you get an understanding of who she is, you know, she gets an understanding of who you are, you determine whether or not you have chemistry, and then you just, you go for it. Um, you know, don't hold back. Hey, listen, I think you're really cute. I'd love to take you out for dinner sometime this week. When are you free? And then it's out there. She knows you're not trying to be a friend. She knows that, you know, uh, you want to be more than friends and you eventually want to bang her. And you go from there. It's either a yes or a no. And um, I guess there's a couple of sort of elements of, uh, of meeting women that, um, uh, you know, this this is like – things that uh, I guess I'm curious about your opinion, like a lot of it is uh, a lot of people say that handling objections, oh, uh, you know, I've, I've got a, 
uh, I've got, uh, you know, I've got school, I've got work, I've got, you know, all kinds of objections come up. Um, there's also, uh, you know, there's also a lot of theory out there about being a bad boy. I'm yeah. curious about your, your thoughts on that. Um, so the first thing, objections. Um, objections, again, this is kind of like an on the fence because objections work, but if you're kind of new and you don't, like, if you don't have general good, like, social skills and you can't read social cues, um, it's not a good thing. So, for instance, a perfect example is, like, when a chick says no, okay, um, a chick can say no many ways. Sometimes she, when she's saying no, she means no, and sometimes when she's saying no, she's really saying not now, or maybe even maybe or yes, okay? And a lot of guys confuse that when, you know, there's a big difference when chick is saying, you know, you're going in to kiss her and she says no versus when you're going to kiss her, no, 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 stop, stop. And she's, and she's joking like that. But when a chick does that, maybe not right then and there, but eventually, whether it be getting to know you better or a matter of her having another drink, it could be a yes. Um, so, but handling objections in general, you have to listen, you have to pay attention to the chick's tonality. What is she really saying? You know, is she saying no? Is she joking around? Is she serious? You know, again, this is why, um, and a lot of PUA companies don't, or PUA teachers don't do this. They don't emphasize the importance of reading social skills, situational awareness, practicing good social skills first and foremost. So what happens, you have guys that are, you know, um, pretty much, you know, socially inept and they're running up on chicks and they can't understand that a chick is saying no and they confuse it for, oh, no, 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 like jokingly saying no, which could mean yes. And then that's when guys get into trouble. I'll leave it at that. As far as you also mentioned the bad boy thing, I think that is a total myth. You can't, you're either a badass or you're not. Um, and that stems from your, um, it stands from your, your upbringing, your conditioning. You know, if you were a kid who was break, you know, who was accustomed to breaking the rules and doing what they want, you're a natural badass. Um, if not, you know, if you had, um, you know, a tight social upbringing, you had, uh, you had overbearing helicopter parents, no matter what, you're not going to be a badass because you can't, you know, depending on how long you're under your parents' wing, you can't unwind decades of conditioning. I don't care what, psychologically, it's not possible. You can't, un, you know, if you had helicopter parents, you lived in the, your parents' house till you were 23, for those 23 years, you had helicopter parents that pretty much shunned any sex or straying from the rules or bending or any of that, you're, not, you're never going to be a badass. Let's just leave it at that. Um, yeah, but again, that also goes into, and I, I don't know if you're going to ask me this. Another thing I see is guys, they, they get really into studying all the various pickup artists on YouTube. And what they end up doing is that they'll say this pickup artist and try to make themselves a carbon copy of them or just a carbon. They'll try to carbon copy some element of their personality and they'll do that. They'll take that element from someone else and someone else. And what happens is you don't have an individual. You just have this mishmash of weird PUAs, just some kids trying to do to create an identity for himself. And that's also, that's not a good thing neither because, um, you know, you got to find, you got to find out who you are and bring out, you know, whatever your best package is, you need to highlight your attributes and you need to um, be proud of your personal brand and put that out there. Um, yeah. Well, in terms of the bad boy thing, one of the things I've been sort of hearing a lot about uh, is uh, bad boy thing is, is a philosophy. It's like, you know, lying to women. It's like being unreliable, being, uh, you know, there's just a lot of um, being challenging is, I think, the politically correct approach. Uh, and I think that's probably a better way to do things. But meanwhile, there there is a lot of, a lot of theory out there about, you know, the more 
you treat them badly, the more they come back running for more. And um, I don't know if that's been your experience too or not. Um, well, here's the thing, and it has nothing to do with that. What ultimately makes a chick coming back for more is if you're the best sexual experience she's ever had. Um, if you knock it out of the park with her, that's what it is. And actually, Eddie Murphy, um, I forget which stand-up routine, he had talked about this, and it's exactly true. If you just completely just knock it out of the park with a chick and you're the best sex she's ever had, she's hooked for life. Um, that's really where it comes from. When, when chicks talk about, you know, they have a thing for the bad boy, it's not some guy that treats them like shit. Although it could be. The foundation of that is the guy who just gets them off sexually in a way that no other guy ever has. Um, and what, what comes with that, you know, when a guy does that and they know they have that, they know that they're in the driver's seat with the chick for the rest of their life. Um, they know that, um, you know, those things that you mentioned, treating them like shit, um, uh, being unreliable, they know that they can get away with that because they dick them down better than any other dude ever has. Um, that's first and foremost, you know, if it's some, you know, the bad boy, I've seen this a couple of times, you know, like a lot of like nerdy PUA guys, they'll try and do that right away or even in the relationship when they're not even close to being that guy who is a total high testosterone alpha male that just bangs them like, like they've never been banged before. And that's not how it works. Well, what, what about uh, relationships? Um, yeah. Do you, I guess, do you find that it's, uh, it's kind of different when you shift from, you know, you started dating someone to actually becoming into, getting into a relationship with them? And is there anything that uh, you've learned in terms of creating that, that bond? Um, um, you know, it's, it's not really anything too, uh, too different because um, how do relationships start? Relationships start um, in today's day and age. They start off, you start off as friends with benefits. You know, you might go on a couple, you go on a date, two dates, and then you end up banging and then you start banging on a consistent basis. And then eventually you, the guy and the girl get comfortable enough where they decide to make it um, like an official relationship. Um, I found and I've said since day one, you know, I know a lot about chicks, um, you know, uh, banging them short term, you know, having them in relationships. But I'm probably the only one to admit that I, I still don't consider myself an expert because I've never been married. And I don't I've never had kids with a woman before. You know, I'm still you know, I'm still in my 20s. So I haven't gone there yet. So, you know, the, the men who have children and are mar and have kept marriages together and have children, raised families, you know, those, in my opinion, are real experts. Um, but I think. What makes a relationship really, I think the two elements of a relationship that really make it stick together is number one, like physical attractiveness between one another, and number two, compatibility in lifestyle. Um, so me, you know, I come from a fitness background. Fitness is a big part of my life, you know, lifting weights, uh, living a clean, healthy lifestyle. Um, the chicks that I decide to date, they also have to be in that lifestyle because it's just how I live. You know, I can't be dating some bitch who... Um, you know, doesn't take care of herself or, you know, doesn't eat healthy or drinks alcohol or smokes cigarettes. Ugh, none of that. I can't do any of that shit. You know, she's got to be on the, we have to be on the same page. Um, and it does, it makes a relationship. Uh, it just, it solidifies it when you're doing the same shit, you know, um, right now, you know, one main chick I'm seeing, you know, what do we do? A Sunday activity. We meal prep, you know, we help each other cook our meals for the week and, um, you know, work out together. Um, you know, it's a very, it's a very healthy, compatible, uh, relationship. Okay. Um, well, I guess, uh, you could tell me a little bit more about, uh, about your website. Uh, uh, I think that you sort of cover really it's lifestyle is more than anything. I think you you cover you know, uh, fitness, uh, you know, they just, you, you really cover everything that relates to a man's, uh, a man's uh, life and how to, um, to improve it basically. And, and 
Yeah. I guess that's maybe you could tell us a little bit more about the different subjects that you cover there and, and some of your underlying thoughts on, on how to, you know, benefit from, from your website. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, like I said, Strength by Sunny, it is, I like to refer to it as a jack of all trades website for men. So anything that a man could possibly be interested in, we talk about it and then some. So we talk about healthy living, fitness, bodybuilding. Um, we obviously, uh, what kind of put us on the map was the, the, uh, the, the dating section, getting good with girls. Um, we also talk about social skills, um, uh, developing social circles, college networking, professional networking. Uh, we also, last year, we, we actually started diving deep into like esoteric, esoteric, um, real news type stuff that you don't see covered in the mainstream media, but that's a, that's a story for another day. Um, and it's just something, you know, it's been a passion of mine. Um, I've been doing it, uh, almost, almost three, four years. I started in end of January of 2014, um, and haven't stopped since, um, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've got readers all over the world. I've worked with, uh, young and old men, um, all over the world, um, with my various uh, consulting packages, whether it be Skype or in person. Um, I actually, um, I took a break from consulting for a little bit um, because I wanted to focus on my book, but I will be getting back into it um, starting, starting you know, in a couple months, January of 2018. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a site, you know, there's a reason why, um, you know, I'm a trusted authority. It's a site where, you know, this information is not available anywhere else. Everything from the dating, the bodybuilding, all that stuff. It's all unique information based off of my own experience and observations um, over the years. And uh, I guess talk to me a little bit about the, uh, the uh, fit, you know, how fitness has played a role in, uh, in your, uh, I guess, in your dating uh, uh, evolution. And uh, I mean, it's obviously a very important part of your life. And um, I'm curious about uh, how, how that may have affected uh, your, your, your approaching of women and your, your confidence and all this other stuff. And, and have you, have you sort of seen that make a big difference for some guys and, and have you seen it also not make a difference for some guys? Well, I'll tell you right now, I've never not, you know, I've never seen it not make a difference where a guy drastically improved his physique and his dating life didn't improve. I mean, that just, it didn't, um, you know, I guess it goes into the debate, do looks matter for girls? Of course they matter. You know, they matter as much to women as, as a woman's looks matter to a man. I mean, that's just, that's just general, that's attraction 101 right there. Um, how has it helped me? I mean, it's helped me tremendously. Um, like I said, I grew up, I, I, I come from an athletic background. I played sports my entire life. I always had, um, just genetically, I always had um, a very good build. And once I started lifting weights, you know, ever since I started, you know, I put on like, I put on like 25 pounds of muscle my first summer working out when I was in high school. And I haven't looked back ever since. Um, you know, it's just what does it do when you have an elite top one percent physique compared to the general public? I mean, it makes you more confident that um, you're physically more attractive. Um, it also makes you more confident that you're physically stronger than the general population. Um, it uh, it makes you eye catching. You know, when you have an elite physique, and you don't even have to be an elite physique, but if you have a physique that stands above the rest, it makes you eye catching. You know, you catch women's eyes. Um, it's made my dating life very, very easy. I've gotten a lot of freebies. You know, I've had chicks, um, you know, I've had chicks throw themselves at me. I've had chicks approach me over the years. Um, that's generally how it, um, how it goes. I usually get some sort of indicator of interest from a chick and then either they'll start talking to me or I'll start talking to them. And, you know, um, like I said, the dating, it's never been an issue for me. And again, that's why I said right off the bat, I've been, I've been very blessed, um, you know, through life so far. All right. So maybe tell us a little bit more about, uh, uh, your book that you've, uh, just come out with and, uh, tell people about how, you know, what, what, uh, it's focused on and all that. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this past summer, I wrote a book. It's called Of Tyrants and Tellers, Stand Tall, Build a Masculine Culture with the War on Men. Um, it's available for sale on Amazon. And uh, you know, right off the bat, you know, it was a great success. It opened. It was the number one new release in not one, not two, but three separate categories. It was number one new release in men's health, um, gender studies, and men's gender studies. Um, it was more successful than I could have possibly hoped for. Um, and again, this was my very first book that I wrote. I didn't even do it for the money or the success or anything. I truly did this for the pure art of taking an idea and creating something from nothing. Now, as far as what the book is about, and this applies to the dating community because um, we've all heard the term the war on men. Um, it's something that is drastically misunderstood. Why is there, is there a war on men? Most guys, you know, cause they're brainwashed by the mainstream media. Um, they don't believe that there is a war on men. There is absolutely a war on men. Um, there's a war on men. Um, this war, it is a silent war that's being waged on two fronts, both chemically and culturally. And this book, it, it exposes both. You know, right back chemically, um, chemically, men aren't men anymore. There's a lot of, you know, there is a silent low testosterone epidemic. Guys today, they don't, they have a fraction of the testosterone levels that a man say, in the 1960s or 1950s had. That's why you see, you know, walk around in public, most guys you see, um, you know, they're either skinny twinks or, or high estrogenic body fat guys walking around. Um, you see very few, the, the, the big, strong, high testosterone alpha male archetype um, that used to be um, glorified in the media you don't really see those figures around everywhere. And there's a reason for that. Chemically, you know, men have been chemically castrated. All the endocrine disrupting chemicals in our food, in our water, all the soy and everything. Um, uh, this has disarmed men. It's made them weak. It's taken the fight out of men. That's just chemically. Culturally, um, that is another story. Culturally, you know, um, 1950s, 1960s, you saw you know, the way men were predict, uh, were portrayed in the media and television and in movies, they were, these were big, strong, heroic figures. Um, you know, but those times, you know, even back to the eighties, you know, that big action stars, you know, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, these alpha male type figures, you know, they're non-existent now. All the men you see in the movies and TV shows, they're emasculated cucks, low testosterone, beta males, um, you also see the media glorifying homosexuality. You know, all these forces coming together. It's not a coincidence. It is um, It is a highly, uh, uh, a highly orchestrated, um, a highly organized war on men that has been waged since the 1950s and 1960s. And my book, it's broken up into two parts. Part one, it exposes all this. It gives all the data. Um, regarding endocrine disrupting chemicals, um, how they affect testosterone levels. I also go over many examples um, in the culture war of emasculating uh, men. And, you know, I give, you know, there's a dark reason behind this. Um, I won't talk about it now. I'll leave it to guys to read. But it all makes sense. You know, why is there... I, I'll, I'll ask you this. Why do we see that the media... I mean, does this make, first off, does this make sense? Like, have you started to notice this in the media? Yeah, no, I can certainly uh, relate to what you're saying. Yeah. So what you're seeing, I mean, I'll give you the short version of it. What you're seeing since the 1950s and 1960s, you have seen a, you've seen a gender role reversal. You've seen um, the emasculation or feminization of the modern day man. You've seen the masculinization uh um, or the media's attempt to make women more masculine. And what, what's happening, you're seeing a convergence of the two sexes now, which is why you see the media, they're glorifying the whole transgenderism and all that bullshit. What you're seeing is, I'll just, I'll tell you right now, what you're seeing is the androgenization, this uh, state of androgyny of the human species for the purposes of depopulation and if you pay attention to the news, it sounds crazy at first, I'll admit, but if you pay attention to the news and you start to recognize the patterns of what's going on, um, 
that is the only conclusion that anybody with any sorts of any sense of sanity will will arrive at. You're seeing the androgenization of the of the human species for the purposes of depopulate depopulation. That's why you're seeing this um, this hysteria of campus rape culture. Because what are they doing? By doing this, they are they are actively trying to um, they're actively trying to discourage heterosexual relations between men and women. Because when you do that, what happens? You decrease the likelihood of procreation. That's why you're also seeing you're seeing the glorification of homosexuality as well. Because what is that doing? That is that is contributing to depopulation. So I know a lot of crazy stuff. I fit it in this book. Again, there's a reason why this book is so popular, why it was number one new release in three separate categories, because men all over the world and women, too, are reading this and they're getting to the end and they're like, holy fucking shit. It all makes sense. And that's just the first part. The second part, because my my only complaint with the whole. I guess red pill uh, uh, niche on the Internet is that you'll get some really great information but there's no solution. There's, you know, guys will figure out, they'll, they'll learn a bunch of shit and be like, oh shit, like, so the world is rigged against men. We're fucked. Well, what do we do now? What's the fucking point? I didn't want to, I didn't want to have a work like that. So the second part, it's all action. Second part, I teach guys how to weaponize, strengthen their mind, body, and spirit. So I have mental exercises to, to give men mental strength. Um, to go through life with, uh, as to go through life as a positive force, um, we have several uh, exercises for that. We also have um, actual bodybuilding exercises. I have a routine in here um, where that will also accompany by pictures where I show guys. Okay, I basically approach this routine based off of my eleven plus years in the gym. Okay, if you were to give me someone from scratch. Never touched a weight before, no athletic background whatsoever. What exercises or what routine would I give them to make them as big and as strong as possible, as fast as possible? What would I do? How would I weaponize their body as fast as possible? That routine is also in this book. Um, and then spirit I talk about. I get into uh, – that mostly focuses on um, the uh, – Internet pornography, the no fap, uh, uh, that kind of niche. Um, I get into how sex has actually been weaponized to disarm men, to uh, to spiritually defeat them. I also I reference several works in that the whole work, the whole book is cited as well. You know, any crazy claim that I make in here, I list the source where I got it from. It's a very well researched book too. Um, it's a very complete work. Um, I'm, I'm again. This was my first book that I've ever written. I couldn't have been happy with it. And I encourage all guys out there who are going to watch this um, to get this book because you're going to learn a lot of shit. Um, you're going to learn a lot of the um, a lot of the things that the media has done to wage war on men. And it's going to anger you at first, but you're going to get to that second part and you're going to feel inspired. You're going to be motivated to weaponize yourself, weaponize, as I said, your mind, body and spirit. Okay, uh, I guess just a quick question. Uh, what, uh, I guess in 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 a, in a nutshell, what is it? What is it, the tyrant and the teller basically? Um, that really, that's just you know, that's just the artist part of me. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. I was just you know over two years ago when I first started thinking about this, that that title of tyrants and tellers, it just came to me, and didn't know what it would have to do with. I just knew it was going to be the title of my first book. I thought it was catchy. I liked the sound of it. And it's it's a haunting title. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted this work to be something that people couldn't stop saying. They couldn't stop thinking about just something that would be forever in their consciousness. And everything about this work is from the title to the artwork, the cover. I got a very an amazing artist that did this cover for me. Um, everything about this. It, you can't take your eyes off of it. You can't take your mind off of it. It's it's something that you'll forever remember. Uh, you know, people will forever remember the name of tyrants and tellers, and you know that's what I wanted. Okay, so um, 
basically, uh, I guess you have the book, you have your uh, uh, coaching that you do, and uh, is there anything? Yeah, I'll be getting back into coaching. Um, I mean, I could start probably in, I'll probably start in December, if not beginning of January. Every guy, any guys that are interested in working with me, whether it be over Skype or in person, um, I would encourage to send me an email at sunny.arvado at gmail.com. Um, like I said, it's unlike anything. I know it sounds cliche, unlike anything, but it's not. You know, guys who work with me, you know, you're not going to be working with. It's not. It's you're not going to get a cookie cutter solution. Um, you know, you're going to work with me. I'm going to get to know exactly who you are, what your upbringing was, and how to move forward from there. Um, you know, you're not just going to be another person that I just tell you approach her, approach her, approach her to improve your dating life. No, we're going to get deep. You know. You are a brand competing in the business of people. I'm going to be the guy who helps you maximize your personal brand value. And then from there, improving your social skills. Um, and then from there is where the dating, it's not something you're going to have to work for. It's something that's going to fall into your lap because the more valuable you are, the more value that you are bringing into the universe, the more the universe will, will reward you, you know, you, you don't attract what you want. You attract what you are. So if you are high value, the universe will repay you and give you high value in return, meaning high value women, high value friends. Um, so that's the coaching. Um, like I said, email me. I also have several. Um, I got a, I got an accompanying diet. It's called the Tyrants and Tellers Diet, and that is a six week program. That's a PDF. You can download that off my site. Um, and I have some other workout programs as well that you can get in the same section too. These are downloadable PDFs, one-time payment um, via PayPal. You get them direct download right away. Okay, so those are so that's basically everything that you're you're marketing at the moment would be your book, uh, these other uh, uh, products on your site, and uh, and the coaching. Yes. Okay. Well, look, I want to uh, tell anybody listening to this that uh, if you end up ordering something from Sunny and you uh, basically uh, uh, email me and Sunny afterwards and tell them that you know you got to these products or things or coaching and everything because you've uh, found out about Sunny through Cliff's List, uh, if you send me an email, I will send you in addition a free extra bonus product uh, just as a thank you for having done that. Um, and uh, I guess I want to thank Sonny very much for his time today. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, you've heard a very unique perspective on, on the world, uh, something that most people don't, don't talk about. And uh, I hope you got a lot out of this. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to getting some good feedback from people listening to this. And I'm sure Sonny would like to hear your opinions as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, like Cliff said, anybody listening to this, you know, thank you for taking the time. Um, to, to listen to this. I appreciate that. Um, hope you, hope you found some value in this and, uh, you know, above all cliff, thank you for inviting me on to, uh, uh, to this, uh, interview right here. You know, I really appreciate that. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll stay in touch as well. Sounds great. All right. Well, uh, good night and, uh, we'll talk again soon.